Within 20 minutes of the alarm being raised, 40 fire engines arrived at the Lancaster West estate. But the firefighters were already facing an impossible task. Their ladders and hoses could only reach the 12th floor. In less than 20 minutes, the inferno was blazing on all 23 stories. One major event that occurred within our country recently was the Grenfell Tower fire. And we wanted to make a video on Grenfell as there are new leads in the investigation and wanted to bring awareness to the incident that many people may know but have forgotten about. If you're unfamiliar with what Grenfell was, here's a quick rundown of what happened on the 14th of June 2017. What was Grenfell? Grenfell Tower was initially built in 1974 as part of the great construction boom carried out by local authorities to house low-income families. And on the 14th of June 2017, 72 innocent people's lives were taken by the fire that engulfed the Grenfell Tower block in North Kensington, West London. Sadly, only 110 out of the 297 residents escaped from the tower unharmed that night. More than 70 people were injured, as well as over 200 people were left without permanent shelter. But some are still without four years later. Just before 1am on the 14th of June, a fire broke out in a kitchen from flat 16 on the fourth floor and 999 received a call saying there was a fire on Latmere Road, West London. The first fire brigade arrived just six minutes after the emergency services were alerted. Within 20 minutes of the alarm being raised, 40 fire engines arrived at the Lancaster West estate. But the firefighters were already facing an impossible task. Their ladders and hoses could only reach the 12th floor. In less than 20 minutes, the inferno was blazing on all 23 storeys. And more than 20 ambulance crews raced to the tower to treat casualties and ferry the seriously injured to nearby hospitals. How the night went. From the fourth floor, the fire spread rapidly upwards and across the eastern side of the building. From there, it spread across the north face of the tower. Video footage shows the blaze reaching the top floor on the east side of Grenfell Tower by 1.26, less than 30 minutes after the firefighters had arrived. At 2.06, London Fire Brigade declared this as a major incident. At this point, 40 fire engines were involved in the incident, either en route or at the scene already. By 2.10, multiple internal fires could be seen burning inside the building. By 2.22, the fire had spread to the south side of the tower, and by 2.30, it was reported that the eastern side of the building was fully engulfed by the fire. The initial stay-put advice from the fire brigade finally abandoned at 2.47, when the incident commander gave orders to advise people to make efforts to leave the building. By 2.51, the fire had reached the western side of the building. At this point, 63 flats were on fire and more than 100 people remained in the building. At 4.30, the whole building was engulfed with more than 100 flats on fire and in total, the tower had burnt for over 60 hours. Bereavement. Bereavement usually means losing somebody we love through death and follows on from change and loss. It is a devastating event, turning our worlds upside down and changing our lives forever. The death of a loved one is the worst feeling you'll ever experience. Due to recent global events such as COVID-19, many people around the world have been going through a hard time and dealing with bereavement. However, there are many other ways people can go through that feeling of bereavement. For example, diagnosed with a health problem, divorce or relationship breakup, a miscarriage, losing a job, loss of financial stability, retirement, death of a pet, selling the family home, or even watching your team lose in a final. Going through one, or multiple of these could lead someone spiraling into the feeling of bereavement. One national tragedy that caused many people to have gone through the trauma was the Grenfell Tower event. I think we were all, when we saw the horrific scenes of what had happened at Grenfell Tower, we all were deeply affected by that. It's absolutely horrifying. And I've been hearing stories today from people about their experiences. I've also been hearing from the local community about the issues and concerns that they have. Now, the government is making £5 million available for uh, those emergency funds for people who need uh, just to get money to be able to buy the normal things of everyday life. 
A question for the new prime minister at Grenfell Tower. Your response was ridiculous. You hid like a coward behind your five million dodge responsibility and acted like you're innocent. And I can see. After this incident, the Prime Minister at the time, Theresa May, didn't even bother showing up to the tower after the blaze, even though she knew she was the one person the nation looked up to, to show up and have a response and possibly show some empathy. I mean, she was the Prime Minister of the country. The people who died and lost their homes, it, this happened to them because they are poor. We are in one of the richest spaces, not just in London, but in the world. Repeated requests are ignored. There is no way that rich people live in a building without adequate fire safety. Everyone mm. I spoke to who was out there couldn't hear alarms. There was no sprinkler system. There was no alarms. But right. what's so there curious no is that eight million pounds has been spent refurbishing. Yeah, because uh, it was an eyesore for the rich people that live opposite. There were so they no put alarms. they put panels, pretty panels on the outside, so the rich people opposite wouldn't have to look at horrendous. As a result of this horrifying event. A total of 151 homes were destroyed in the tower block and surrounding buildings. Many of the surrounding buildings were evacuated due to the possibility of the tower collapsing. However, at the time of recording, the building still stands, but the government are close to coming to an agreement to demolish the building four years after the fire. More than 2,200 people have screened for PTSD just over a year after the event, including those who lost family members, were rescued, or were evacuated from the tower and 67% of adults were assessed as needing treatment. Fire brigade staff who dealt with the Grenfell Tower tragedy had almost taken 5,000 days off work with PTSD. A total of 17 London fire brigade workers have now been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. This includes 14 firefighters and three 999 control room operators as well as two thirds of adults who survived or were affected by Grenfell Tower have shown signs that they need to require treatment for PTSD as well. 195 out of the 201 households have been permanently housed, yet there is still six households left in temporary housing, even though it is four years later. The aftermath. The Grenfell Tower was one of the most deadly and tragic events to ever hit this country. One of the reasons why the building went up in flames so quickly was because the contractors who built the tower used cheap materials to save costs, including using an aluminium composite cladding, which is one of the most flammable claddings you can get. And somehow the government to this day still allow it to be perfectly legal in the country. I'm still here, temporary, coming up to the third year anniversary and we was promised that we supposed to be permanently housed. I'm still suffering, I'm still jumping hoops through the council and I find it's, it's unfair, it's about time that they show some kind of dignity in, in us as human beings. For no one to show any care afterwards, for, the, for the, the people in power, the council to just disappear and not support and not um, be there to answer questions and not be there to, com you know, they completely disappeared after Grenfell and left us out to dry. There was, there was no support, it was literally just community members on the ground doing all the work. I feel angry, I feel sad, I feel dis disappointed uh, in the government as well, especially with the council. From day one, they promised us to rehouse us permanently. They can't expect us mental health and um, physically to heal and to get better with, without settling into our home. The aftermath, the Grenfell Tower, was one of the most deadly and tragic events to ever hit this country. One of the reasons why the building went up in flames so quickly was because the contractors who built the tower used cheap materials to save costs, including using an aluminium composite cladding, which was one of the most flammable claddings you can get. And somehow the government to this day still allow it to be perfectly legal in the country. We all know that everybody copes with bereavement in different ways and when bereaved, there is no specific way you must behave or feel. There are no rules, no time frame, and no judgment. Nevertheless, help can always be appreciated. So if anyone watching this is suffering from bereavement or know somebody who is feeling bereaved, there are helplines in the description. We highly recommend our partners, Sue Rider, who are at the top of the helpline. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please like, subscribe with the bell notification on, and we'll see you next time.